Hello friends. Welcome to the new episode of Archetu. In today's video we are discussing about types of walls. So, let's start today's episode. Basically, walls are categorized as Load-bearing walls Non-load-bearing walls Cavity wall Shear wall Partition wall Panel wall Veneered wall Faced wall while, load-bearing wall has further categorized as Masonry wall Masonry wall construction again divided into Brick masonry And Stone masonry Reinforced masonry wall Hollow masonry wall Composite masonry walls Post-tensioned masonry walls And Retaining walls Load-bearing walls Load-bearing wall is a structural element. It carries the weight of a structure from the roof and upper floors, to the foundation. It supports structural members like beams, slab, and walls on above floors. This wall is exactly over one another on each floor. It is designed to carry the vertical load. Non-load-bearing walls A wall which doesn't help the structure to stand up and holds up only itself is known as a non-load-bearing wall. It doesn't support structural loads above. It is constructed in a framed structure. Most of the time, they are interior walls whose purpose is to divide the structure into rooms. They are built with lighter materials. Cavity wall. The cavity wall consists of two separate walls. These walls are made of masonry. Those two walls are known as internal leaf and external leaf. This wall is also known as a hollow wall. Shear wall. It is designed to resist lateral forces. This lateral force comes from exterior walls, floor, and roofs to ground foundation. The usage of the shear wall is important, especially in large and high-rise buildings. Partition walls. It is used in separating spaces from buildings. It can be solid, constructed from brick or stone. The partition wall is secured to the floor, ceiling, and walls. It is enough strong to carry its own load. Panel wall. It is a non-bearing wall between columns or pillars that are supported. The panel is installed with both nails and adhesive. The paneling design choices include rustic, boards frame. Veneered wall. It can be made of brick or stone. The most famous veneered wall is made of brick. The wall is only one leaf thick. Faced wall. It is a wall that masonry facing and backing are so bonded as to exert common action under load. It creates a streamlined look. The faced wall is easy to install. Masonry walls. Load-bearing masonry walls are constructed with bricks, stones, or concrete blocks. These walls directly transfer loads from the roof to the foundation. These walls can be exterior as well as interior walls. In masonry wall there are broadly two types. Brick masonry wall and stone masonry walls. Nope. I said, stone masonry walls. That's better. Well, moving to next. Reinforced masonry wall. Reinforced masonry walls can be load-bearing walls or non-load-bearing walls. The use of reinforcement in walls helps it to withstand tension forces and heavy compressive loads. Hollow masonry walls. Hollow or cavity masonry walls are used to prevent moisture reaching the interior of the building by providing hollow space between outside and inside face of the wall. These walls also help in temperature control inside the building from outside wall as the hollow space restricts heat to pass through the wall. Composite masonry walls. These walls are constructed with two or more units such as stones or bricks and hollow bricks. This type of masonry wall construction is done for better appearance with economy. Post-tensioned masonry walls In post-tensioned construction, hollow concrete masonry units are laid conventionally and press-dressing tendons are either placed in the concrete masonry cells or in the cavity between multiple leaves. Press-dressing tendons are either installed during wall construction, or access ports are left in the walls so the tendons can be slipped in after the walls are completed. 
Retaining masonry walls. Retaining masonry walls. Retaining walls are relatively rigid walls used for supporting soil laterally so that it can be retained at different levels on the two sides. Retaining walls are structures designed to restrain soil to a slope that it would not naturally keep to. A retaining wall that retains soil on the backside and water on the front side is called a seawall or a bulkhead. So, that's it for today's episode. I hope you have understood basic types of wall. If you need more information please write me in comment. Thank you.